<clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is the City of Homestead Committee of the Whole Meeting. Today is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, and it is 5.30 p.m. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Ross? Here. Councilwoman Avila? Here. Councilman Shelley? Here. Councilwoman Bailey? Mayor Here. All right. Um, are there any additions, deletions, or deferrals? No, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Um, we have before us the minutes from the July 13th, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, we have those minutes before us for approval. Do I have a motion for approval? Moved Second. by Councilman Roth. Seconded by Councilwoman Bailey. All in favor? Any nays? All right, if there are no objections, um, it appears that there are uh, representatives from some of the proposers for the City Hall site in the audience. And if there are no objections, I would like to move that discussion item to the, to the head of the agenda. Are we good with that? All right. Very good. So we will proceed to Um, tab number seven, car number 3293, Old City Hall 163 notice. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mayor. On June 18th, 2021, the City of Homestead issued a 163 notice. The purpose of the notice was to alert interested parties of the city's intent to dispose of an interest in the approximate 16 acres of real property on the southwest corner of US 1 and Campbell Drive, known as Old City Hall for the purchasing or acquiring a leasehold interest in the property or portion thereof for purposes of redevelopment or rehabilitation. Responses were due on July 19, 2021, and proposals were received from the following five entities, 13th Floor Investments, Centennial Management Corps, Housing Trust Group and Flux Collective, Related Urban, the Myers Group and Master Development Inc. And on this item, staff is seeking direction. So that's it. You've now put the ball into our court. Yes, sir. Very effectively, I might add. Yeah, very, very much so. All right. So who among us would like to kick off that conversation and discussion? Okay. Wow. All right. Um, oh, Councilwoman Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. I just first wanted to thank all the applicants. This is something that I'm sure I am not the only one who has driven by there and just daydreamed of what an amazing thing it could be. Um, I think a couple in particular really focused and looked into what Homestead needed, um, what would be the best fit. So. You know, the money part isn't my area of expertise, but as far as the design, I really liked where Housing Trust Group was going with it. Um, just the design of the area that is on US 1 and Campbell Drive, it still makes it feel like a really open space, having those two tiers of landscaping, I thought was a great, a great idea. Um, also with Related Urban, the ideas of setting things up to be able to have food truck events and an area for the concerts and um, food truck events like I just mentioned. Um, that is something that I think would do really well here. I think it's something that our community is looking for. Uh, definitely the mixed use for some more anchor restaurants. And those are, I think those are my main things right now. What I would love to be sure we include is some type of art gallery and really tie in that historic part of City Hall in the area. Um, and I think I know that some of the other ones didn't have as detailed of a plan, um, but I just wanted to mention my favorite parts of those two. So, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Shelley. Thank you, Mayor. I guess, I guess for me, I, I want to get a little more clarification from what staff is looking for or what we're trying, you know, what, what the goal of the discussion is. Is it, is it kind of to weigh in on what we like with each one? Is, is there, I mean, what, what is it we're trying to 
Are we supposed to pick somebody tonight? Are we supposed to talk about what we like conceptually? Uh, I guess I want to get a better idea of where the discussion needs to go, and then I can, I can weigh in on that. I, I can comment on that. And no, it's not, we're not asking for you to pick anybody tonight. When we put the 163 notice out, it, it simply said what I stated for the purchasing or acquiring a leasehold interest for the purposes of redevelopment or rehabilitation. It could have been anything. Someone could have come back with a proposal for a water park. You know, it was wide open. These five proposals are somewhat similar in their concept, but basically what staff was looking for was an understanding of conceptually what the council would like to see there. All right, so, then, so we're... There's no suggestion that we were suggesting any kind of, any one of these proposals, or that we had any one of these types of proposals in mind. We just wanted to understand from the council what they would like to see there. Okay, um, and so that helps a little bit for me, just trying to understand kind of the framework of where, where what we need to weigh in on. Because um, one of the things if ultimately we're, we're choosing between the different proposals would be some sort of a, you know, more of a summation of what each one is proposing. Because right now we have, we have a lot of stuff in front of us, but we don't have any type of report that says, you know, the financial uh, analysis of what this one is. This is a lease, this is an option to buy, this is over this period of time. Um, you know, some of the time frames, some of it's, it's similar, but it's also very different in the way in which each one of these applicants is proposed to carry it out. So that, that would be one of my concerns about trying to make a direct decision, but if you guys are just looking for a conceptually to see do we like the ideas um, you know, that they're being presented, then, then I'll be happy to kind of to weigh in on that. And also, Councilman, this was a very different process. If it was a typical, typical RFP process, there would have been a selection committee, there would have been comments on the very thing you're talking about. But since it was not, and we were simply put it out there wide open, staff was very careful to not make any kind of judgments or comments. And then so with, with that, I guess my, my feelings on the actual proposals themselves, I, I do think we have some, um, you know, some, good, some good options on the table. We have some good quality applicants that have come through and, and made some options uh, for us to consider. I do agree we need to do something with that site. We need to figure out what we need to do. It is a prime piece of real estate, you know, to be kind of a, um, you know, focal point of, of our city as people are coming through uh, downtown US-1 there. You know, the only concerns I guess I have with some of the mixed-use component concepts is one is, you know, again, I think we have plenty of density everywhere else. Um, so I have a little bit of concern about putting residential property there. The other thing is, is that, you know, we put a lot of time and effort in developing this downtown concept. And so if I'm going to go with any type of density or high density at that, you know, I'm, I'm, Again, as we talked about, I'm struggling to even get it downtown, but if I'm gonna go anywhere, that's where I would wanna put it because that's what we've kind of planned on is having that be our entertainment district. That's where people are gonna go and spend their money. So a mixed use product on the old city hall site starts to take away from that because now instead of having one area where we're going to, we have two areas that are competing for those dollars, you know, competing for the people coming to, and I don't think we're quite ready yet to say, okay, the downtown's successful. We have a lot of work left to go there. And so ultimately, until we get that flourishing, then it makes sense to kind of expand your district to say, okay, that's doing really well. Let's add more and more to the mix so there's more things to bring people in. And, and so that's my only concern about the proposals is the density side of things and then also some of this mixed use concept where you're now taking what we really need to be focused on bringing into the downtown, you're putting it away from the downtown and potentially making a center hub where that's where everybody goes and the downtown never quite makes it. So th those are my two, I guess, concerns about the proposals as they are here. But I do think there are some applicants to work with. I think there's the ability to, um, you know, to see, to see what they might be able to come up with. So I'm, I'm open for more discussion with my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, and Madam Manager, following, I think, you know, your answer to Councilman Shelley's uh, conversation potentially let's say in terms of ranking as you would do with an RFP and maybe Mr. Pearl would need to weigh in but um, you know as, as part of this process uh, is going to be you know financial ability experience um, all of those as, as a couple of the items but all of those issues that you might find that would be ranked in an RFP analysis. And I'm wondering that just as 
as a guidepost, it would be helpful if staff could devise those elements that we need to find uh, for these proposers and, and, and do a ranking like clearly. Um, some of these proposers have, um, you know, far deeper pockets than others. Um, some provide for more immediate um, assumption and extinguishment of the city's debt. Others are taking it out very long term. Obviously, there's different densities, there's different designs, so I'm wondering what the thoughts would be both from, from staff and, and council as to, um, and I think it might be appropriate to, to do some of that on, on a formal basis rather than each one of us doing our own individual analysis of you know, financial wherewithal and, and stability and so forth. So could you weigh in on that for us? I'd be happy to, Mayor. And before I comment on it, one thing with an RFP, if we did put out an RFP, we would have a sense from council what council wanted to see. To Councilman Shelley's point, if he wanted to see less density in that area, that would be part of how we would write the RFP. In this case, since we didn't have any specific guidance and the 163 was just very general, we could certainly outline with regard to the proposals we got things that would be important if it were an RFP for a mixed use type of project. I would defer to our council with regard to how that process would go with this 163 notice, but certainly there are areas and items that we could focus on and, and essentially judge and let the council know what the summary is and what's there. Thank you. you know, and with regard to competing with downtown, I think there's, there's perhaps room for both. Some community amenities that we would like to see come to Homestead won't necessarily fit downtown that could very much so fit on this project. And I, I feel as though the conversations with former members of council and, and former managers, that this site has kind of been pushed to the side waiting for downtown to catch up. And without getting into the pandemic, you know, I have you know, just in conversations with folks, when are you gonna do something with City Hall? Why aren't you doing something with City Hall? Uh, that site costs us a lot of money every day just to sit there just with the debt, not to mention the lost opportunity of tax revenue and utility fees and sales tax and everything that goes, goes along with it. And I, I'm a believer that a residential component, and although I'm, you know, it's no secret I'm not big on, on a lot of density, but a residential component, I think, can, can very well supplement and complement what I think the vision is for downtown without without interfering with that. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd want to thank the applicants as well. Well, not really applicants, but the, those who submitted um, ideas for us to consider. I think it's exciting to see that there are companies out there that want to bring these types of concepts to Homestead. Um, I uh, am looking forward to uh, going to recon and seeing what kind of ideas come of that. But with the way things are going, with mandates and the different states doing what they're doing, who knows if that will be an opportunity. Uh, so I think for now, this it, I, I like seeing this ahead of time, but I'm not ready to make any real decisions on it because I'd like to see where our conversations with development services goes. We're talking about taking a um, a, a trip to other downtowns around Dade County. I'm going to Naples on Fifth Street to see what their downtown looks like. And I'd like to see, um, you know, firsthand with this new uh, process with, with redeveloping our downtown, where the, these types of ideas fit in, where is it best? Is it, is it going to fit right on that corner? Maybe in a different corner, maybe um, components of it. But I, I, lo I love what I'm seeing and it's really, um, an opportunity to continue motivating the conversation to move forward. So thank you for the opportunity, Mayor. Well, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor. Yes, thank you. Um, 
thank you to all of those individuals that submitted these proposals um, for downtown. I kind of agree with Councilman Shelley, I'm concerned about the density um, portion of it. And I think it's very important for us to not lose sight of our downtown. But as the mayor um, indicated that we need to do something with that city hall site. So we have to move forward in a particular direction. But I feel that how this was put out there for the proposals, it's their vision and not ours. Our handprint, footprint is not on this anywhere. So I think a RFP may be necessary so that we can give you some guidance on what we would like to see. Because although some of this is very exciting, I think we need to weigh in on what we need to, want to see on that site. And um, further conversations with the proposals, direction to you, an RFP. I think our vision would fold into this as opposed to these proposals coming to us with their vision. So I welcome the opportunity to meet um, with those who submitted these proposals to talk about what I would like to see um, for our, for this community, because this is where we live. This is where many of us were born and raised. And it's very important for us to weigh in and truly decide what goes on that property. So I welcome the opportunity to discuss more and I would like to move forward with an RFP after you get some very specific um, information on what we would like to see moving forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I, I want to maybe, you know, we can find some middle ground between, between what I'm saying and what you're saying. You know, and, and I don't recall if you were able to attend, but the manager did convene this body and specifically ask for input as a group what we wanted to see there before this, this went out. And other than comments to the effect of, let's see what the market brings to us, I heard a lot of crickets. So, you know, from where I sit, we've had that opportunity uh, up, up until this point. But to your point, in continuing to talk to these uh, proposers, it's probably not a good word, but it's what comes to mind at this point, that as we continue forward with this, and I don't want to delay this at all, I, want to I would like to see us continue moving forward and have the opportunity to have, A, more formal proposals in public from, from the five who, who wish to, to make that presentation, and then we do have that opportunity to put our fingerprints and our footprints on this with those who responded. With, and, and I'll ask our attorney or manager to jump in. A, an RFP could literally take months to draft and publish and, and get the results back. And it has to be far more specific. We have, under the scenario we're in now, we can achieve that same result with a less rigid and more expeditious process. Is that correct? Uh, other than an RFP. Because an RFP says, bring me this. What will you do? This is what we, we want versus we have the opportunity now to know who's interested and work with them to reach that happy medium. Well, certainly, as we all know, the RFP process would take months. And there's no question about that. And if the council would like the proposers, the we're using the word proposers, to come back with more details, we could certainly do that. But that also would take some time. So I don't know which would be more expeditious because if the proposers came back with more details, the council may decide to go out anyway. I don't know. But certainly if these proposals were something that could be morphed into something the council liked, it might be a quicker process. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. What, best case scenario to craft, publish, and receive responses to an RFP could be six months? It could certainly be several months. And, you know, we, we've kind of started that process and have the ability to continue moving forward from here rather than really sitting on our hands while that 
that process plays out, we have the opportunity to go to as many of these proposers as who are interested in having further, or we're interested in having further discussions with and, and, and mold the proposal to, to something that, that you know, reasonably meets all of our goals and desires rather than uh, crafting an RFP that takes density out and takes certain components out that some of us may feel compete with downtown, you may not get a response at, at that point. And again, to go back to one of my colleagues' comments that let's see what the market brings us for that site, this is what the market brought us. So. If I may uh, follow Vice Mayor, up. thank you. Um, I do think we need to move forward. I, do, I, do, I don't think we should slow this down, but for me, if it's rushed, it doesn't feel right. And I don't want to rush this. This is a very, this is, this piece of property is prime real estate. And we have to get it right. So if it's rushed, it doesn't feel right for me. Um, with what's before us, I, I would like to, to get more specifics from the individuals because in some of the proposals, it, it just seems like everything here but the kitchen sink are very lofty. And I want to find out how can we bring in our nonprofits to this and one of this, there's a lot about education, but what does that mean? What does that look like? And there are select schools presented in here. How are those schools selected to, to be aligned with this project? So there are some specific questions that I would like to ask of um, these individuals. And I just received this last week, so I didn't have an opportunity to weigh in. And oftentimes, these meetings and these workshops are held when I'm at work. We've never had these very important meetings like this at two o'clock and three o'clock. So I haven't been able to participate in these workshops because of that. So, you know, with all due respect, that's why I would like to meet and discuss um, this further. And honestly, I really didn't want to see residential there. I want a pure commercial. But what was brought to us had that, you know, mixed use residential um, component. So um, I'll rest there and I'll wait until my other colleagues weigh in. I'm in total agreement with you. And before the pandemic, reality would have been purely retail, commercial, and professional office. I don't know that in the world we live in now, unfortunately, that that's even ever going to be in the realm of possibility, at I least agree. in my lifetime. I agree. Maybe yours. You're a lot younger than <laughs> I am. Did I see someone to my right? Who? Councilman Shelley. Thank you, Mayor. No, just as far as kind of my concern I raised or my question I raised before I started my other comments was, you know, one of the problems with this particular process, and, and I'm with you, I, I don't, I'll go with where the majority wants to go as far as what process we ultimately follow, but, but my biggest concern with where we are now is there's no way of comparing one applicant to another because we didn't have a set list of what they had, what the proposal had to look like, what the information they had to provide to us was. So some of these proposals are very comprehensive and other ones have you know, just a generalized paragraph or two that says we, we want to do X, Y, or Z. And so it becomes almost impossible then to figure out which one of those uh, and compare them apples to apples, so to speak. So that's one of my issues with where we are at this point, which is part of where you, you mentioned the mayor and, and also earlier on, you know, finding some way to make some sort of a comparison or do some sort of analysis of each applicants, both their proposal as it comes to financial terms, as it comes to what their actual capabilities are as a developer themselves, what is their history, what is their skill sets. You know, a lot of that information would then help us determine which one of these proposals, you know, if, if we say we don't like what they propose, but we like the proposer, then we can maybe work with them and say, can you do what we want to do? And they may say, no, it's, it's this or nothing. On the other hand, they may say, well, sure, we can work with you and we can build that project. But right now, I don't even have a way of, of doing an analysis to determine who to focus on uh, or who to tell staff to focus on or who to even start working with versus doing it with all six at the same time, which also becomes very cumbersome. So, you know, I, I agree that as we figure out what we're going to do with this, you know, more information is needed in order to make an assessment and make some, some decisions even outside of what, what the actual product itself is. So. And Councilman, if I may, and when I first answered your question, I said that we didn't expect the council to make any decision today because we had no idea what would come back. 
But if what I'm hearing is that everybody wants more information from these individual proposers, I would suggest that some of the things, the very things that you're mentioning, what the vice mayor mentioned with regard to nonprofits and what you're mentioning with regard to density, that we hear what those things are. And then if you do want individual proposers, the proposers can, you can tell them you have to take this into account. It's not so, I mean, because I think we have two issues here, at least I have two issues here. One is the actual product itself, which I have, you know, I have opinions on as far as, and I think all of us have some opinions on what we want to see there, don't want to see there, what could be good. But then you also have the, the second part of it, which is taking away the actual product that's being presented. Who is presenting and what are they actually presenting? And, and those are things that are not very clear in all these, and, again, and by design, I'm not saying that, that it's anything that should have been done differently because this is how we put it out there. But now that we see it in front of us, you know, there, it, it makes it very difficult to assess what's even being presented to us and how to make a decision and where to give you guys direction for. So that would be my, you know, there's two parts here. One is what is the product itself we all wanna see? And then two is how do you even do an analysis of what the proposal has come into us and whether or not, you know, the two are even saying the same thing, speaking the same language. And in a summarized form where I don't have to spend hours and hours going through and making a chart saying, okay, well, this one is proposing this, we'll get paid then but they want that condition, you know, those are all things that would be helpful even to make this assessment to then get to the round two. So, thank you, Mayor. Absolutely, and I, and I understand that. So, Madam Manager, is it feasible that by the September council meeting, for September council meeting, we can have a staff and legal analysis of the financial implications, the, the time frame, those, um, densities uh, so that we have that framework to compare and then invite those of the five who wish to come back to make a more comprehensive um, presentation. Mayor, do you mean an analysis of the current debt on the site? No, or I, what I mean, what the proposals how does each proposal uh, anticipate dealing with the debt? How quickly are we relieved of the debt? What other um, financial um, benefits may flow to the city other than relief of debt? Other, other, than, you know, other than the relief of, of debt under each proposal and, and the timing, as well as proposer A has financing and is committed to break ground you know, not later than X versus proposer C wants to tie up the property for two or three years contingent upon financing for subsidized housing. The, those kinds of, of, of benchmarks that, that we need to have in, a, in a, some kind of coherent fashion in front of us and then, then hear the conceptual part of the deal from the proposers. Uh, understood. I think the challenge to getting it done that quickly is that some of the submittals have no information with regard to finances. So it would necessitate us reaching out individually to those groups, which we can certainly do. I just don't well, know I, how... I disagree. They had their time frame. They submitted what they submitted. And if it's not there, we ignore that portion. And, and in an RFP, you'd call them non-responsive. We'll follow whatever the council will direct, but... We did not include any details. By the way, also tell us how much, how you're going to deal with the debt on this and what the finances are to do this project. But, you know, obviously we'll follow your lead on how you want us to handle it. Mayor, if I may. Or Councilwoman. Are you proposing that uh, we only subject ourselves to the proposers that are here now? We advertised it uh -huh. and five proposals came in. At least one of them wasn't timely. That's the decision as to whether or not we are going to even allow them to be part of further conversation. Clearly, in an RFP, you would not. So, but to answer your question, this body directed the manager and staff to advertise this property as being available and give us a proposal by a certain date. These are the five, well, four, Four of the five proposals came in by that stated date. So, you know, in, in order to allow others to come in or to be analyzed at this point, 
to me, get, gives a preference or a benefit to those on the sidelines who have since heard about this but did not see fit or take the opportunity or uh, weren't aware of, of the notice. So, yes, at, at this point, um, I think in all, in all fairness and under the terms of the, the notice, uh, this has to be limited to those who complied with that notice. My recollection of the conversation when we decided to put out the notice, it was um, just a gesture to see what would come, not necessarily a last call for opportunities to be brought to the table. Um, so if, with, with that explanation, I'm, I'm more in favor now of going through the RFP process, which I think is a more fair process, really identifying and making it very clear what we're looking for. And I think that these p proposals are, are they have extra brownie points as far as I'm concerned. And I think that they have a leg up and a, and, a, and a head start on being able to submit something for that RFP so we can take it into consideration. But um, I, I like what I'm seeing. I like the different options. I look forward to having conversations. But to say last call and what, what's been submitted is what we're stuck with, I think it, it is rushed. I'm, I'm not saying that's what we're stuck with. I'm saying that in order to analyze what's in front of us, the, and for lack of a better expression, borrowing from the RFP concept, the rankings and analysis have to be done. No, no one is saying that we are going to, at the end of the day, have to do business with any of these proposers. But now to allow others to come in is, is not in the spirit, spirit of, of equity and fairness at all. So if we are going to to continue moving forward expeditiously and cautiously, um, I'd like to see the, the, ra the rankings, the staff rankings, if you will, or analysis done for the four proposers who submitted concepts on a timely basis. And again, I'm not willing to wait seven or eight months at best for an RFP to be crafted and put on the street and for the market to tell us what you want is really nice, but it's not financially feasible, or you're going to continue to have the debt on the property because we can't afford to build your fantasy land um, at, and, and assume your debt at the same time. And we have a lot of limiting situations here. So, you know, uh, again, and to, to Councilman Shelley's point, I think in order to analyze what we, we have in front of us, staff is going to have to do some, some charting, if you will, of comparing these, these various proposals and then give, give those who made proposals the opportunity to come in and address their concept and product specifically. And that would be a fork in the road for us to be able to say, all right, we'd like to have further conversations with you and you, or you know what, we're, we're not going to go forward. And we, we have the not go forward option at, at many waypoints down the road. But injecting an RFP process into this now, potentially, probably in reality, another year before we're even having the conversation we're having tonight. So that, that's what I would personally like to see happen. And again, I recognize we've got a bailout at any point in this process. Well, Mayor, we can certainly look at each individual proposal and consider them in terms of a typical RFP um, scoring, if you will. There are some very general things we could look at and consider. And if there was anything specific the council would want us to add in that analysis, you could just let us know now. Well, you know, clearly the the extinguishment of the debt or other financial incentives to the city, um, proposed density, you know, those, those high points of what, you know, I think at one time or another, all of us have espoused. You know, Councilman Shelley has been very clear from prior to tonight that I, I'd like to see something happen, but I don't want to see it compete with, with downtown. And we can have those nuanced comparisons later. Um, I, you know, I think you and I are on, on the same page as to what I would like to see 
I'm sensing that there are some folks here who really are just interested in kicking the can down the road to middle of the near next year. So we'll have to let those weigh in and see if you've got a consensus to go forward down that, that process. Councilman Shelley. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. It, the, and again, I'm, I'm, whatever the majority decides between RFP or continuing this process, I, I'm on board one. But, but I do, one of the things I would like to clarify or, or maybe inject my, my own request, and that is I know that if we're gonna do the analysis, I'm a little more hesitant because it was such a wide open analysis or so, such a wide open request and it didn't have any parameters that required any particular proposer to provide any particular type of information. I would request that we have staff at least get the, ask each proposer for the same information for whatever they're gonna put in this chart. So even if one of the proposals doesn't have one of the items, that proposer, they should at least ask that proposer to provide an answer. And they may say, I can't, I don't have time, my answer is my answer. But I, I don't want to now punish the proposers because there was no rules at the start and not have them be on equal footing. Because again, my goal is to get equal footing answers so that I can compare them across the board. So that would be my only request as part of this process, if this is the process we're going with, is that whatever information staff puts together that each proposer, at least if it's missing in the current proposal, is given an opportunity to provide that information so they're on equal footing with the other proposals. That's, that would be my only request. And if, if that's okay, the route that we go, then as we would with an RFP process, we would include those things that the mayor mentioned in terms of density or how you would satisfy the debt and anything else that we would have as the scoring points, if you will. We could let them know before they do that. So um, if I can wait, sure. wait in just for a moment, because what I'm hearing is we'd like more information, um, a decision, the process of how we get there. Um, seems to vary a little bit. In terms of scoring and, and the responsibilities that are placed on staff from where we are today, um, we didn't pre-establish scoring criteria. Now, staff has acted in a fact-finding capacity this, to this point, and they're certainly free to continue to do that. So any additional information that you're looking for, um, to Councilman Shelley's point, if you have something uniform, I think that's totally appropriate to go back and ask for additional things. Um, we didn't come up with, we didn't say, well, financial capability was gonna be 30% upfront. Now, you, you all can debate that as part of your discussion, but I think it would be helpful if what we're looking for is more information, if the discussion's steer towards how we're going to get that, do you want staff to solicit that from each of the proposers, allow the proposers to come present it themselves? I think you have representatives here, they hear what you're saying, but if there's some specificity with the what you, would like to see, because it was so general when and out, if we could get that direction for staff. So we, it, you're assured that what you're looking for, the information you're looking for is, is brought back to you so you can make an educated decision. Thank you. Mayor, yes, Mayor. I just have a quick question. I would like to know who's in the room. So if possible, if we can have a, a representative to come up and introduce themselves so that was, we can kind of go in there. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. I'm like, who's in the room? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I, I kind of got, you know, it, and, and if this is a good place to, to, to have that input, and then maybe we can then come back to deciding to give staff direction or doing an RFP or closing up shop, whichever it may be. But before we go there, I want to set the example. This is probably one of the most important decisions a council can make. And I'm going to be very clear, and I'm not sending and receiving text probably about this matter. And I would call upon everybody else to stand on their own two feet and um, be transparent about information that they may be asking for or receiving that's not on the record with respect to this tonight. So. Following the vice mayor's lead, uh, who's here uh, on behalf of whom? I, I recognize uh, some of you. I'll just invite uh, you know a lead person from from each proposer to come down and introduce themselves and uh, give us your perspective on where we are and some of the conversation we've had tonight. I know <laughs> none of you are shy. Come on. Maybe Mayor Stark. <laughs> with the list as listed on the item. The first one is 13th floor investments. Okay, the 13th floor, are you here? No one here from 13th floor, who's next? Centennial management. 
Centennial. Okay, I don't I don't see Mr. Sweezy. Next. Housing Trust Group and Flux Collective. Uh, HTZ, okay, sure, come on down. And Mayor, if, if, if I may, while they come down, we didn't require them to be here tonight, so I don't want anyone to think that, oh, because they're not here, that's not a good thing. So I think it's very important for us to know They that. were all invited, but not a requirement. Right, Absolutely. they were required, <clears throat> yes. Come forward, give us your name and address for the record, please, Absolutely. each of you. Max Shrews with Housing Trust Group, 6012 Southwest 159th Court. Delia Tamora Housing Trust Group, 999 Southwest First Avenue, Miami. Eddie C. went with Flux Collective, 1160 Northwest North Miami River Drive. Thank you. All right. Well, we're very excited to be here, and, and thank you, and we appreciate the proposal being released. We're actually very intrigued to actually hear, you know, what you guys have to say regarding the proposals. Uh, there's at least two developers here um, and that are actually present here and at least three proposals that I feel was very complete. Um, I welcome any input that you guys have and how you would frame this, but I do believe and I do feel that this should be going forward with the proposals that you have today. Thank you. Um, all right, we, we, may, we may call you back, but uh, thank you for coming down tonight. Appreciate it. Next. That was HTG. Related. Related. Good afternoon, Albert Milo, President, Related Urban. Um, thank you for you know so the discussion. Uh, glad to, to, to be here. Um, we, um, if you had a chance to analyze our proposal, uh, you'll see that we have quite a bit of experience in doing public-private partnerships. That's what we specialize in. Uh, we've done um, over a billion dollars uh, in the last several years. Much of that development was still done during the COVID uh, time. Um, so we were able to um, deal with some of those challenges, you know, of construction, of design, of financing. Um, but f I think the, the process that you started gives you good flexibility as a board. And, and why do I say that? Because you, you got five responses, you know, you put in, um, you had one, one criteria, and that criteria was to submit it by a certain time. Um, and you got five companies that, that, that are pretty, um, pretty good companies. They have pretty good balance sheets. There is some similarities in their proposals, but there's a lot of differences in there too. So I think relying on your staff to give you some analysis is, is a good idea, right? Because it kind of starts to, uh, to, to give you something to use as a metrics. Um, but, but there's certainly the ability to proceed and, and move uh, quickly. There, there, there is a, a value to that. There's a benefit to that. And, and the fact that we respond to many RFPs, but things change as we saw even 30 days ago I think everybody was thinking the market was going a certain way and the economy was going a certain way and the opening uh, was going a certain way. And here we are 30 days later, um, now trending a different way. So what I, what I like to say is typically in these type of deals, time is not your friend, time is your enemy in the sense that you have the ability now to craft that vision and, and talk and, and, and share what you would like to see, the, 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 the good parts that you see in the proposals, the things that you would like to see improve, but you have, you have good candidates at the table. So, the, you know, pushing to an RFP process, if it does delay six, seven, eight months to, to then come back, we could be having a totally different discussion because the market could be totally different. But I think, I think you got a good uh, amount of responses and, and I think you have something to work with there. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Milo. The last one, Mayor, is the Myers Group and Master Development. And the Myers Group and I, we were not expecting them. Is that correct? We had some affirmative indication of that, right? Obviously, you know, whether a group is here tonight or not, whatever our direction is, will be be conveyed to uh, to each of those. <clears throat> so I guess we're back to the same question, and I'll hand it back to the Vice Mayor. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm always willing to meet in the middle. And to Councilman Shelley's point, if we're going to work with who we have, which I'm not completely against it, but it's very specific information I think we need and it's not all in every single one of these documents. So if you're going to obtain that information, I think it's fair to reach out to each individual who may not have it to capture that information for us to work with. If we don't go through RFP, that's fine, but I want our vision to be injected in this process. I so what I would like, like what I'm, what I'm interested in is I understand that completely commercial is out the door probably now, cons considering the climate that we're in, I get it, but that's what I wanted to see. I would like to see, like you mentioned the financial incentives for the city will, not will, but local contractors from our community need to be involved in this project and not all these people from a thousand miles away coming in and developing on this site. How does our community our local businesses, our nonprofits, our schools, how do, how do they fold into this? Some of the features of these different developments, I can talk to the specific proposals about because some of them are really great features. I love the design of the residences inside, the materials that they're using, I love it. I love some of the features. So we can, we can talk about that a little bit more. But local um, vendors, local contractors, financial incentives to the city, and how do our education com community fold into this project? Those are big ones for me. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I, I, I guess two, two items. One is, as Matt had asked a question, uh, city attorney had asked a question about scoring. I don't know that I envision staff doing any scoring on this because this is more information Let's do the analysis, we'll be the scores, we'll figure out what we like and don't like, and we'll assign that publicly to everybody. So I, I didn't envision scoring, I don't know if anyone else does as well. And then just, just for fun, I'll throw out, you know, what, what I'd always wanted to see for this site, which is different than anything that's being proposed or discussed, and it may not even be ultimately feasible, but, but ultimately I'll throw it out. I mean, I've always wanted, we talked about two years ago, you know, some sort of a convention center concept related to the Keysgate golf, golf course. Um, but I've always thought that would be a prime location for a convention type center bring people to our, our community, bring them to our downtown. All of a sudden we have people there that are now feeding that downtown process. We're far enough away that, you know, people will actually stay for whatever convention they're at, but close enough to anything and everything they could ever want to do during, during the night and the evenings or stay an extra day and spend time in Miami, the Keys, or wherever it might be. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to see that idea pitched as well. I don't know what the economic viability or feasibility is of that. Uh, but just something else as we talk about commercial and residential and other things that's unique that would fit our plan and fit our vision the question is whether it's financially feasible for a developer but i just wanted to throw it out there while we were all kind of throwing out ideas so that's all i have mayor thank you we appreciate it uh, councilman turn to my husband roth thank you mayor i think this is the first time i'm actually saying anything about this whole topic here and um you know I like, I like the concepts, I like what I see, but the problem I have is we don't have enough information. That's a cliche, but this is a very important decision. A few of the council members have mentioned that, you know, our legacy may uh, be a part of this vision, um, but it's not our vision at this point. It's a vision that we asked for, and this is what we received from the submitters. Um, Councilman Shelley just said it. My vision has always been some type of a convention type center on that location. There's nothing deep south here that supports anybody of a group of more than 400 people. Um, we, are, we are located in such a place that conventions would be uh, attractive because of the other attractions in the area. We're surrounded by, first of all, two national parks. We got Everglades National Park, Homestead Bayfront, Biscayne National Park. And 
the topic that was spoken about last week at another meeting, not city related, but state and traffic related, was the Florida Keys. And huge attractions. Combining that with the component of commercial and a hotel, um, it just changes the entire look of the corner. It sends a statement, I think, to the rest of the county that the city of Homestead um, is, is doing things that are good for the city. A convention center is good for the entire county. It takes pressure off of Miami, but it brings them to the city of Homestead as well. So thank you again, Councilman Shelley, for bringing that idea to the forefront. Um, I just, I, th I think if, if, if it's the feeling of the council up here to move forward with a mixed use residential type product there, uh, I think we need to go further into it with the developers, figure out who uh, has the wherewithal to do it. And as I've always expressed about this particular property, it, it, it shouldn't leave the hands of the city. It should always be a part of the city in long-term leases. I see that some of these have that specific idea. Um, I, I'm not a big, big finance kind of person, so I'm sure there's going to be other financing issues when it comes to construction and build-outs and things like that um, as far as long-term debt or whatever we have on the, on the, on the land itself. Um, but I think we still need a little more time uh, to make decisions based on more information we receive from the proposers. Um, I don't know if any of you are hotel convention type people. I'm sure you can figure that out and make, 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 make a plan work in that idea too. So I think there's still more discussion that we need to have here. Um, you know, I, I, the, the process, but, you know, we're going to stop the process. We're going to go forward with the process. Uh, the process has started. The ideas are beginning to flow. This was not a a request for uh, an absolute. This was a request for what your ideas were. And I think you brought great ones, but I think we need to look at the vision that the rest of, of, of us have up here and what we would like to see. Maybe it's a, a, a combination of two things. It could be a combination, I don't know. Um, but I would like to see more stuff go uh, before us, more information, whether it be an RFP, whether it be just work with the developers we have here. Um, I know we probably threw a curveball with the hotel convention center type thing, but I mean, that's another vision. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me speak. Thank you. Councilman Bailey, anything further? Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, should we kind of itemize the things that we would like to see in these next round of proposals? For me so far, what I have is obviously the financial, the experience. I think when we're talking about the density and the design, it's really important to have some elevations because um, three stories, four stories, five stories can look a lot different if you've got that commercial component in front. Um, so elevations would be really important for me to see. And we also have to keep in mind with the density. I know we all cringe at it, um, but if the county is planning on pushing, this is a great opportunity for us to do something on our own terms. Um, and then there's also a chance of adding those commercial components a little slower um, to make sure that it's not too much at once and taken away from the downtown. We can take that into account as well. So for me, those are the most important things that I would like to see that they all, that they all can include. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Lavo. I really like the idea of the convention center and the hotel concept with the commercial. Um, I, do, I do like the idea of it being a robust um, and energetic uh, part of town that can bring events and concerts as well as um, a nice nightlife uh, if you do have some commercial, regular commercial options. When, when I was talking to um, some business owners around town about residential possibly being on that corner it was not well accepted so i'm i don't have really hard feelings one way or the other but i like the idea of the convention center and i'm leaning towards no residential 
on that corner. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then, I, I guess we're at a point tonight where we need to direct staff to make that analysis. And, you know, I think they've gotten some directions from us tonight as to what what components need to be in that analysis. And certainly I, I'm confident that the manager will be reaching out to our attorneys and to each one of us to, to further develop those, uh, um, those waypoints in that analysis with the ability of the manager to reach back out to the proposers and have them fill in that information so that um, we at least have, we're comparing those apples to apples in terms of, of those benchmarks all with the understanding that the product and the fingerprints come after, if and when, we've decided to try to, and I'll use this term loosely, partner with one of these five after that analysis. But if we don't, we don't. But I don't even know that we, we, we need to have that analysis in front of us to to decide whether or not we're going to continue uh, talking about uh, what components will be will be in that uh, that project, and you know, a a hotel boutique hotel I think was in one of the proposals. I don't think they called it a convention center. I think it was a the the language used was a boutique hotel. But you know, if a majority of this council says we've got to have this hotel component and no density, that could very well winnow down or wipe out all of the proposers, and, and we'll need to know that at, at some point, you know, the next couple of uh, benchmarks in the process. So I'll, I'll repeat some of the things that I think the council wants to see in our evaluation, and as Councilman Shelley pointed out, we won't be ranking these Essentially, you will. So some of the most important things are obviously the finances of the respective submiss submissions, the ability to satisfy the debt, the manner in which the debt would be satisfied, financial incentives for the city, and also the consideration if it's a lease versus a purchase, and basically to understand the city's needs and the city's vision and maybe consideration of a convention center and or mixed use residential commercial and importantly that we focus on the focus beyond local contractors how do our schools and our nonprofits fold into this the education community and Kate, let, let me just stop you for a second I, let me just give you a bit more specifics when I say education I mean sort of like an apprenticeship program okay I didn't want it too global but specifically like an apprenticeship program okay Thank you. And also, obviously, the proposer's experience, um, past projects, qualifications, their finances, references, typical things that we would do with an RFP, and density considerations as well. Oh, and, it, and I would want to be real clear, the, the difference in their financing, someone may say, I'm going to go borrow five and a half million dollars based on the full faith and credit or other collateral of my company versus someone else saying, we've got to go apply for housing tax credits and sale financing or whatever, and, and that may tie up your property for a, or, and we need to tie up your property in order to go apply. Those are important distinctions. Uh, yes, actually I had written down timelines as well with that in mind, so yes. Mr. Council Shelley. Just, just to clarify too, because I think all, all those are, are great things, but you're also going to do, ana do an analysis of the actual proposals as presented to go, correct? So those are all the additional information that may already be in these proposals, or you may have to ask for additional information that aren't in any of the proposals, but you're still going to look at each proposal as presented and, and compare that amongst all the other proposals, correct? We could certainly do that, Councilman, but I thought that we wanted to gather this information from all of the proposers before we did that analysis. I mean, yeah, timing, however you guys decide to do it, but 
But what I wanted to make sure of is all that stuff I want to know about if we haven't already asked or hasn't been presented by any of the proposers. But I also want to make sure that those people who did or those developers that did make a great proposal and have information in it, that we're also comparing that across all the other proposers and then making sure the other proposers are providing the same information. Okay. So that, that's what I envision. I don't know if you guys have a different vision, but I don't, I don't want to be where we end up throwing all these proposals out and you guys only ask those questions when some of these proposals work very hard to put in a lot of information that I want to then compare against the other proposers as well. So that, that was kind of what I envisioned. Like in terms of this proposal has X hundred units and X thousand square feet of commercial versus the other guy. Is that, is that kind of where you were going? There we go. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that we're not throwing all these proposals out and then just asking new questions. I want to do an analysis of the existing proposals across each other and then for any proposals or all proposals don't have the other information that we also want to see, that becomes additional information to ask for all, from all the proposers as well. So it's kind of a two-prong request. Understood. Mayor, if I may? Yes. Councilman. So the idea is to try to make it as fair as possible between all of these proposals so that it's apples to apples comparison. And I'm fine with that. And, and if that's the hybrid option for, for getting to really clear options, so that we're doing it as expeditiously as possible, but as fair as possible and not rushing through that process. So we have time to evaluate and still ask additional questions. I'm good with that. And while I was looking in my phone and reminding myself of um, the debt we do have on, it's about $8 million, correct? A little bit more. It than, is yeah. really important that we get a project done. And I look forward to being part of that solution. So um, thank you. The final question I would have is whether or not the proposal that was not submitted in full on a timely basis, whether or not this council is going to allow them the opportunity to take part in, uh, or, or are we going to direct council to analyze, uh, or direct the manager to go glean that information from the late proposal? The first part of that proposal came in on time and then the next day they submitted a few more pages so I'll follow the direction of the council they did correct me if I'm wrong on time was who was it I think it was 13th floor 13th floor yeah we basically got the biographies and a printout of the tax on time website and then, on time and then there was more information the next day Mayor, if I may. Thank you, Mayor. I think we should evaluate what was submitted on time. To be fair, what was submitted on time. Then what we, but I, get, I think the question is, what they submitted on time, do we consider that sufficient? Because they added more information the next day. When you rank it, you rank what you have. So I don't want to completely discount them from what they did submit. So to be fair, I think we rank them. Well, not you're not ranking. I think you, you, you put the responses, you analyze it based on what you have. If you don't have the information, but you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, because we said that if they don't have the information, they're that gonna go we're going to go back. Right. Yeah, go yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So. Scratch that. So what's, no. <laughs> I, I think our city attorney's chomping at that bit to weigh in on that. I, I was just. When we got back to the, the ranking, I, I wanted to jump in. And <laughs> um, it sounds like what you're looking for is, is basically a summary of the, the terms across the board. Um, some of which, you know, there's some backup information that you may want that may not be included in some of the proposals, which, uh, I mean, from my understanding from the discussion thus far is have staff go collect that information. So. You can check every box from everybody. With respect to how you want to answer 13th floor, it's a kind of a separate question that the mayor brought up. Is they submitted late? Do you want us to discount that? Do you want us to invite them to continue in the process and to accept further information from them? I think that's that would be the direction on that piece. Oh, I'm thinking that if, if we've given staff direction to go back and clarify or obtain additional information for those that had the entire package in on time, 
perhaps even though this one was incomplete, we had a notice of their intention on a timely basis. So yeah, no harm, no foul, I guess. And you are soliciting additional information from potentially all proposers as the city works up its list and staff goes through the proposals. So, you know, I, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, thank you. My turn. So, council, are we? Did you My turn. Want? Yes. My turn. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, th this is interesting for the developers to see this conversation here, and, and I'm still a little bit confused myself. Um, there, there, there seems to be a consensus up here that there, there won't be any residential component to this project at this point, although that all of these were submitted that way with residential components, whether it be hotel convention, maybe you put a little residential, but mainly it's commercial. So I think listening to everything that's being said, maybe we should narrow down what the dais wants, the bias, uh, what we want, and say, look, can you guys do this for us? Can you build us a convention center? Can you build us a hotel? Can you build us retail? Can you build us commercial? Can you build us office space there versus all this other stuff and, re and residential? Because if they come and do the exercise based on these proposals, we're, we're almost going to be stuck with something we may or may not want. Instead of asking them to do all this work now, do we want it to be this way with residential or do we want it to be a different way? And I think the exercise of going out and asking these folks to bring us in, you know, their ideas was good, but as we're sitting here having a conversation, other ideas are popping up. And I think some of those ideas have a, have a worthiness to them that we need to consider before we make all these people go out and do all these things, disclose all their financials, tell us who's better than who, but it may not be what we want. So I'm asking if you want to consider some other direction before we make them go out and do all this work and come back to us and say, you know what, we don't want this. Mayor, if I may. Sure, Councilwoman. Thank you. I, what I want is the best option for the best price. Um, and I'm okay with limiting it to these proposers if the proposers would be willing to come back with the apples apples comparison for their vision concept in addition to providing a vision for just the um, the center and the commercial component with the hotel so giving us two options to look at that are apples to apples in terms of the information they're providing and um, giving us those options to consider and keep limiting it to the the applicants that did submit something for consideration because we didn't give them any direction when they did submit something we didn't say we want these five details and then be to be able to say one was incomplete versus compared to another so I'd like both options from these five applicants and on uh, how much timeline are we going to be offering what was the was it 60 days last time well for an RFP without the RFP oh I had asked staff whether or not they could do the analysis of what's before us in time for our September council meeting. You know, staff is, staff is the group that will be doing the heavy lifting between now and then, not really the majority of the proposers. There may be some clarification, but we're not asking the proposers at this point to tweak anything we're asking them maybe to fill in some blanks, but we're not asking them to adjust their concepts. Now, that's not to say that based upon what some of them have heard tonight, we may get a letter or an email tomorrow that says, based upon the conversation, that if there's going to be no residential component, we are not interested in this project. That's, that's what we'll, we'll need to know from, from them. And that, very likely. Can we extend the deadline to October so that we give them ample time to tweak their responses or fill in the blanks, as you say, and provide the secondary concept without the residential component? But don't we need to have some thought and some consensus as to, based on their experience, based on their financial wherewithal, and those types of issues, don't we need to have that in front of us before we send someone out to redraft their entire concept without knowing if we're interested in their or are, are, are good with their credentials? 
You're asking them to basically do a whole second proposal without knowing how the financial aspects are going to be analyzed. To Councilman Roth's point, why have them work on a plan that may or may not be what we want? And I don't think I'm ready to rule out residential completely. I, w I want to look at all the details and all the facts with the residential component, without the residential component. And if, you're, if your point is that you want to narrow it down to a, a proposer and then give that one proposer or the bottom, the top two to come up with the final plan for the convention center, we might but be again, we're, shooting We're not asking them at this point to create anything new. We're asking them to clarify information in terms of ability, I guess, and, and current proposal so that we can analyze you know, financial wherewithal is what, what I'm going to be looking at and, and, and density and, and experience. We're not asking them to come back to the drawing board. Vice Mayor? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I think um, the proposals, they've heard what we would like to see. And I think based on what we've articulated tonight, they'll determine whether or not they want to move forward. So coming back in, in September, I think it's fair to come back in September. And um, they'll determine whether or not they want to move forward. They may email us tomorrow and say, listen, we're no longer interested based on you know, us gazing the temperature of the council. We don't know. But I think they have enough information from us to determine whether or not they want to pivot and add a convention center or a hotel so uh, I think it's fair enough to come back in September and have a, another bite at the apple. Thank you. And I almost, at this point, over the course of the conversation, I'm not even certain that we would look to any further presentations in September. Perhaps this would be an analysis, a public analysis of what staff gleans from what's in front of us plus what they go back to clarify. And, and then at that point, you know, based upon whether or not someone has, has telegraphed to us that they're just no longer interested if, if it's a very small amount of residential or is going to require a convention center, it's not in everybody's wheelhouse. And we'll know that prior to that analysis. So in terms of direction, Mayor, direction and what where to do uh, what I'm not clear on now is if we even mention the convention center when we ask the other proposers um, to fill in the blank so to speak or are we just going to do the analysis of what we have as Councilman Shelley said and then give others the opportunity to add more information but not mention the convention center I, I would guess you could ask all of them if they are interested Okay, but we can do that. It, it seems that even with the two bare bones proposals, clearly it was a mixed use project that predominantly con contained predominantly a residential component. I think that's clear even from the incomplete package. Yes, that was absolutely clear. So, yeah, I mean, that may be one of those pieces of information you go back to. Them. Are you even interested in participating if if that's where we're going. Because I think what we could do somewhat expeditiously is come back, if we can get the information, if the other proposers are interested in providing further information, we can certainly bring the analysis back relatively quickly. And with regard to the convention center, if we ask, are you interested in this, then people could have more time to present something. Yeah, I think it's fair to ask all of them if they are interested and in moving forward with that concept then those of you who are more interested in the convention center you at least know who is interested in it and then you can determine how you want to move forward and what our next steps would be so i think that's a simple a simple ask and then we determine how we move forward well and it is as an example we may determine that the proposer that indicates an interest in doing that project really doesn't have the financial backing or their, their business deal is not really in the best interest of the city. And, and again, that's one of those waypoints we'll come to as this progresses. So is, is everyone good with 
with that understanding of the direction to staff at this point? Okay, right. so we are going to focus on what we received, but we're also going to ask the question. And then we'll see what happens from there. Very good. Thank you, and thank you to the representatives of all of those who submitted their concepts for coming down tonight. Appreciate it. All right. So let's go back to the agenda. I think we are uh, due to go back to tab two. Uh, motion to place uh, car number 3274 on the council agenda, the Homestead Historical Digitization Grant. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The City of Homestead has been awarded a grant in the amount of $50,000 from the State of Florida Division of Historical Resources for the Homestead Historical Digitization Project. This item is for the acceptance of the grant for the digitization of, that's not easy to say, Mayor, digitization of historical resources to be available to the public and be pump, become part of the Homestead Cybrarium collection. There's no funding match required. A few years ago, the city received a donation of newspapers dating all the way back to the founding of the city, and it is our intention that this grant will be used to digitize those newspapers into a searchable archive and preserve an important piece of our history. Based on preliminary estimates, we expect that $50,000 will cover the cost of digitizing the full collection. There will be an RFQ for this digitization services that will come back to council for award in the new, near future. Staff recommends that mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a grant for $50,000 from the state of Florida Division of Historical Resources to execute the agreement and establish a budget. Very good, thank you. Any initial questions or comments from council? I have one quick question, yeah. Mayor. Councilwoman Bailey. Has it been discussed with the Cybrarium how residents can access that information? Would it only be available at the Cybrarium or could that also be a web portal? My understanding is that it will be accessible through the web uh, and a web portal anywhere. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll open the public hearing because I believe there has been at least one person patiently waiting in the audience or maybe you're good with what you've heard tonight. Is there anyone here in the audience wishing to speak on this matter? Or anyone online wishing to address the application for the digitization grant? None online. All right, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask for a motion to uh, place this item on the council agenda. Move it. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, tab three, motion to place car number 3265 on the council agenda. The trustee squad agreement with the Department of Corrections, number W1243. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the City Manager to enter into an agreement with the Florida Department of Corrections for one inmate work squad at a total cost of $57,497 per year. This is a one-year agreement with the option to renew for one additional three-year period in whole or in part upon the same terms, conditions, and mutual consent of both parties. This agreement replaces contract W1104, which expires October 29th, 2021. And this is very similar to an item we brought recently. There are a number of inmate crews, and this is one of, I believe, a total of five. And there is no payment made for this contract if there's no inmates working. Right, thank you. Any questions or comments from council? All right. Is there anyone in the audience or online wishing to speak on this matter? I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion to place um, car number 3265 on the council ag agenda, the trustee squad agreement with the Department of Direction, Corrections. Move it. Moved by Councilman Roth, seconded by Councilwoman Bailey. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, next item, tab four, motion to place car number 3281 on the council agenda. Florida Department of Law Enforcement Crime Reduction Initiative. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The City of Homestead has been awarded a grant from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in the amount of $7,217 to fund overtime funding will be utilized to enhance law enforcement crime suppression act activities that include the identification and appreh apprehension of offenders who have been identified as committing a violent crime in South Miami-Dade County and whose criminal activity has impacted the City of Homestead. Staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a grant for $7,217 
from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to execute the contract agreement and establish a budget. This is also a grant with which I think you're familiar. We've had it in the past. Thank you. Any initial questions or comments from council? Is there anyone in the audience or online wishing to speak on this matter? Then appearing, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion to place this item on the council agenda. Move it. Moved by Councilwoman Bailey. Second by Councilwoman Avila. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Next item, tab five. Motion to place car number 3294 on the council agenda, the Children's Trust Youth Enrichment Program. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Children's Trust of Miami-Dade County has awarded the City of Homestead a grant in the amount of $195,811 in order to provide a college preparation program through the Homestead Police Athletic League for youth who are in the 8th through, 8, 12th, 8th through 12th grade. The program provides academic assistance, social and emotional learning, civic engagement, and organized sporting opportunities. The grant period is from August 1st, 2021 to July 30th, 2022. The program will serve 60 youth, and at the end of the program, depending on the status of COVID restrictions, there will be a statewide college tour. This is the fifth year of a five-year grant, and there is no match required, but the city does provide an annual grant audit that is, that is done as an in-kind expense of $6,000. Staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a grant for $195,811 from the Children's Trust of Miami-Dade County to execute the contract agreement and establish a budget. Thank you. Any initial questions or comments from council? Councilwoman Bailey. One comment, Mayor. Thank you. I just wanted to wish SOS a very happy 30th birthday. And thank you, Sandy, especially for all these amazing grants and programs. And we wish you all the best. Thank you, Mayor. Is there anyone online or in the audience wishing to speak on this matter? And appearing, I'll close the um, public hearing and ask for a motion to place this item on the council agenda. Moved by Councilwoman Avila, seconded by Councilwoman Bailey. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next item, tab six. Motion to place car number 3224 on the council agenda, the Department of Children and Family Services grant agreement. The state of Florida Department of Children and Family Services has allocated $77,747 in order to fund one-time domestic violence detective that works in collaboration with multiple social service agencies that address the safety and therapeutic needs of victims of domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking. The grant requires matching funds of $19,436.76, which will be met through the salary of a second domestic violence detective that is funded by the city of Homestead. This agreement commences on July 1st, 2021. Staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a grant for $77,747 from the Department of Children and Family Services to execute the co contract agreement and establish a budget. Thank you. Any initial questions or comments from council? Councilman Roth. If I didn't say anything, Sandy might think I was sick. Thank you, Sandy. It's like $300,000 in, in uh, grants you brought the city again. Job well done. Thank you. I do have a question. This indicates that this will fund one full-time detective. So th this is for funding a detective allocated solely for this purpose, for the domestic violence or abuse type situation? Yes. So, okay. Just wanted to, wanted to be sure that, you know, we weren't split. This was an absolute full-time dedication of uh, people power to that position. All right. Is there anyone in the audience or online wishing to speak on this item? None appearing. I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion to place this item, car number 3224, on the next council agenda. Moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Councilman Roth. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. So, tab eight, car number 3285, use of City Hall Plaza for special event. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Homestead Main Street. 
traditionally hosts the Fiesta USA event each September in Lasna Park. This year, the park is unavailable due to ongoing construction. Main Street is seeking to use the City Hall Plaza for the event, which is scheduled for Saturday, September 18th, 2021, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. The event will include a parade down Washington Avenue featuring music and dancers. The staging area will be the parking lot to the south of City Hall with the parade ending at with the parade ending at the north parking lot of City Hall. Approximately 10 to 12 vendors and food trucks will be on the west side of City Hall under the colonnade facing Washington Avenue. A DJ setup powered via generator will be adjacent to the vendors for the duration of the event. Additionally, Main Street seeks to host a farmer's market the second Wednesday of every month from October through April 20, October 2021 through April 2022. The vendors will be staged under the colonnade. There will be no DJ setup or power required. Staff is seeking direction regarding the use of the City Hall Plaza by Homestead Main Street, Inc. for their Fiesta USA event on Saturday, September 18th, 2021, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., and for a recurring farmer's market the second Wednesday of every month from October 2021 through April 2022. Thank you. Any initial questions or comments from Council? Councilwoman. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is a fantastic idea. I love the idea of bringing the community together in front of our City Hall and incorporating um, that beautiful street, Washington Avenue, that we're trying to promote and re rejuvenate and beautify. Um, I think that this is an opportunity to consider maybe adding the courtyard of our City Hall to our list of available parks uh, for future events and maybe making it available for other grants if we are able to designate it as a official park. I mean, there's trees, there's benches, there's plenty of space. Uh, so if, if there's anything that uh, our, our, our manager's office can add to that, I would appreciate it. Um, Matt, is, is that something that's doable? We knew we had historically never had, and we've had this discussion once or twice about the, inter, the, the interior of City Hall. And we've never had a discussion as to whether or not we wanted to make the plaza available for rent for private special events, which is sort of why we're here. Um, is, is this something you're interested in? And if you are, are there parameters under which you want to make it available? You know, we, when we rent out parks, we have a fee schedule. People pay uniform fees. Occasionally you'll get fee waivers where people come for city facilities. I don't know if we're open for business or we want to maybe run a sort of a pilot thing and sign off as Main Street does do events, you know, for the city from time to time. I, I don't know. You know, I think we're just looking for direction as to what you want to do with the plaza. How open for business do you want it to be? And I think we can make the distinction here that Main Street is a quasi-agency of the city of Homestead, so, but it, it raises a very good issue as to whether or not this plaza might be made available to private events. Um, you know, I think that's going to come with some, a special set of circumstances that we'll probably just have to work through. I mean, I don't think one size fits all for any of our parks. So. I'm personally open to having that discussion and, and looking through a draft of, of how that could be accomplished. Did you? Yeah, I think for this particular item, I'd like to motion to approve it, uh, but I'd also like to come back and continue the discussion on turning the plaza into an official park available for rent. Right, Mayor? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm open to that as well. Um, having further discussions on how we want to utilize that space moving forward. Um, for the purposes of, of what's presented before us tonight, I am okay <clears throat> with moving forward and allowing, <sighs> allowing for the use of the plaza for a special event. I think that it's great to activate that area and farmers markets are pretty popular in several municipalities. Um, it, it brings the community out um, inside and outside of the community. So that's great. My only request for this would to be, we know you have to keep it clean or clean up afterwards, but I would like to see a pressure cleaned, particularly if food is involved, I think it should be pressure cleaned in order for that space not to look run down. So that, that would be my only caveat, that it's pressure cleaned afterwards with the food trucks and it uh, has to be pressure cleaned. That's for me. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Manager? Pressure cleaned by, by the city? By no, the not by the city. By, 
by the nonprofit, by the user who's who's utilizing the space. It shouldn't fall. The onus shouldn't fall on us to pressure clean. I think if we're allowing the space to be used for free, I think it should be pressure cleaned afterwards. All right. So I think we had a motion to approve the requested use. Did we have a second? Yeah. Councilman Shelley, was that a second or a comment? I'll, I'll second. I had a comment as well. So I. I agree. I mean, I'm open to the discussion about using the plaza for public purposes, but I do think we need a process, a procedure to make sure that we understand under what circumstances, what fees, you know, there just needs to be rules and regulations that everyone follows so it's a fair process. But I'm open to that discussion to activate. Uh, I think we always envisioned it would be an active city hall plaza. That's why it was built. So I'm open to it, but I also second this, this particular motion. All right, so for the issue at hand, we have a motion and a second for approval. All in favor? Are there any opposed? That with the pressure cleaning. Uh, I'll amend my motion to include the pressure cleaning. And it, and honestly, I was there the other day taking some pictures, and it could use a pressure cleaning. So if it's not already part of our semi-annual or, or quarterly cleaning process for the courtyard, we should probably look into it, make, making it a, uh, a staple for that area. I mean, under the benches specifically, we're very dingy. And um, over the weekend, I think we should be clear, cleaning out those garbage cans more often, too. Thank you. Mayor, Council, to clarify my motion, issue it's including the, garbage the pressure cleaning. Capacity. Yeah. We have increased, uh, pursuant to the Council's suggestion, we have increased the number of garbage pails in the plaza to address some of the trash issues. And also, historically, we have depended on the inmates, and when it got really bad, it was because the inmates weren't there, but you can see that it's much, much better now that they're back. But it, it does require constant pressure cleaning, so I'm glad it was brought up. Councilor okay. Shelley? The only question on the pressure cleaning side of things is do we have any estimate of what that's gonna cost? Because that's a large amount of concrete. Are we, or is the applicant, or the, in this case, the not-for-profit, can they do it with their own volunteers and their own pressure cleaner? Do they have to hire a professional service? What square footage of the plaza are they utilizing? Are they going to have to pressure clean it all? Because that, that can be expensive. That's the only question I have. It's an unexpected expense at this stage. I don't know the answer on the price. We can certainly get that back to you, but that's a good question. That would be on my only concern with, with the requirement at this moment is not having any frame of reference of what that could be. It could be $100 or it could be thousands of dollars. I, I don't know. Vice Mayor. Yes. Um, I think it should be the space that they utilize because we have to think if we are allowing this space to be utilized, it's going to get run down. It's not utilized for these specific purposes now, and it can use a pressure clean. So I, I think that's very important to add to the mix. And because of you're having an event, I'm willing to partner with you and, and help to fund the pressure cleaning. But I think the area utilized, it has to be pressure cleaning, and the city should not bear the cost for it. Let's turn. You've got control of the mic there. Oh, there you go. There you go. Good evening. My name is Yvonne Knowles. I'm director of Homestead Main Street. I know all of you and appreciate all of your support over the years. The concept we have is not a major big farmer's market. I brought Margie Pekarski here who owns Bee Heaven. She's actually going to run the farmer's market. Her display is not tremendous. I mean, we're not talking like 20 vendors. We're talking a small group of uh, small presentation. But the important thing, we chose her because she's part of the SNAP program and the, come on up, Marjorie. I don't know if you know the FAB program or the SNAP program that benefits our community. And Margie understands this and works with it already. So it's gonna benefit our community having somebody who knows how to work with it and also uh, financially assist our community. The footprint of the farmer's market is about two of the sections in the gazebo on Washington Avenue. That's the only area we're using for the farmer's market. So it's not the whole plaza. And we're, right, and we're gonna keep it really condensed. And what is your footprint about? Um, Hi, my name is Margie Bukarski. For those of you who don't know me yet, I'm the owner-operator of Beehaven Farm. We've been participating in many events here in the city of, of Homestead and elsewhere in Redland. Um, we, uh, first I'll speak to her mention that we 
offer, we participate in a program that um, doubles the value of food stamp benefits specifically for the purchase of Florida grown fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's a, it's a nutrition incentive, education incentive. Um, Feeding Florida is the one that's administering the grant and we've been participating since it, the program's inception back in, I don't even remember now, I think it was uh, 2009, something like that. And we started at Overtown uh, with the very first, we were the very first market and, and booth to actually accept SNAP EBT. That's become more, mo more commonplace, but the doubling of the benefits of fresh access bucks, which by the way now is unlimited through the end of the year. There is no limit. As much money as you want to spend, we will double the value. Uh, for any SNAP eligible items, we'll contribute to the total, but the benefit is for Florida grown fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's intended to benefit both the SNAP recipients and the farmers, the local farmers in particular. Um, to uh, address the size of our display. We typically take up uh, maybe two 10 by 10 tent spaces. We could make it as large as four during the height of the season, and we can bring as much or as little uh, fruits and vegetables and, and other value-added farm items. Uh, we also have honey, we have eggs. Uh, or it, we, we have constrained ourselves to a single 10 by 10 tent, but that's really hard. I, I have a hard time staying within that, those bounds. No, you really, you really want to, like to 20 by 10 um, area typically. Uh, we clean up after ourselves. We tr typically, uh, we, we participated at the Pinecrest Farmers Market uh, way back since it was Gardner's Market who, who ran it. Uh, the, the way we always did everything is we set up, we try to be very clean. We're, as we're going through the day, we pick up anything that's dropped. Uh, yes, you know, there may be a, a small smear left at the end of the day, but we, we clean up. We don't, we, our, our motto, my husband is here in the audience. Um, when we're done, we leave no evidence behind is what we say. So I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm, I'm really happy that. This has been, and, this. and not that it may matter, but this has kind of been presented to us as a farmer's market. And unless I miss hearing you, this is a single organization that obtains produce from various folks and sells it to fund other so, programs. So, so what I am, uh, Beehaven Farm is a local farm. We're, we're a small, highly diversified certified organic farm. We're located in Redland, a mile from the Fruit and Spice Park. And we grow a whole lot of small quantities of many different things. We also, I also represent other growers who either are certified organic or are pesticide free, meaning they're not spraying poisons on their products. And a lot of the, the, the reason that we do that is because a lot of these growers, they don't wanna be out there with the public. They don't wanna pick up and make, set up a tent and set up a booth and spend time. So I said, you know what, why should we deprive people of access to that? And this is direct, straight from the, the market, the farmer, straight to the customer. Um, I am completely open about any farm that is participating. So whatever's on that table that came from wherever, I will tell you. So, and I am one. Just want to be clear local. as to, you know, it's not, yeah. I mean, the term I'm, farmer I'm is a little in, different. In the but, yeah. sense that I'm just going out there and, and buying, you know, at the terminal market, I, I am growing and I am, the growers that I work with, we are like a family. Story. Thank you. Thank you. And, and it may very well not need pressure cleaning after each. Yeah. So, so we day could, either. If, What's we could, that? if we could maintain our footprint of the 10 by 20 or so, and we brush and clean right afterwards, I'm not sure we can afford a pressure cleaning of the whole plaza. <laughs> so, I want to make sure we're clear on that. No, that. I, I don't a, think that's what you were asking. No, no, I wasn't okay. asking that. That's a lot. Not, not the entire plaza. Um, the, the entire plaza will be have foot traffic, but then that'll come underneath the city's umbrella to routinely pressure clean and, and maintain the plaza. But from what I've seen, some most of the farmers' markers are on asphalt. When I go to Collie Square, it's like asphalt, so you really can't tell the traffic was there. Or in Palmetto Bay, it's in the grassy areas, but that's concrete out there. Yeah. 
And I'm concerned about that. If the council wants to not require pressure cleaning and just let them have at it, but I'm just concerned I have about a suggestion. the concrete. Maybe we see how it goes after the first one. And if it needs pressure cleaning, the city agrees to do it after the first one as part of the pressure cleaning of the whole plaza. But then if there is a problem, then obviously you'd have to deal with it after that. And I think the question was brought up earlier. Realistically, with the level of use that I perceive is going to go on there and the, the intensity of the potential problem and the scope of it, you know, if they're volunteers, if they could come up with one of these little portable electric pressure cleaners and we could give them a spigot to hook up to somewhere and an outlet, it's, it's not a big burden. We can work with that. Thank you very much, sir. Any, are there any questions about our program? Just one comment that I know that the last couple of years have seemed especially long, but it feels like forever since we've had a Main Street event. So we're very excited to see it. Well, I hope, you know, this resurgence of COVID has got everybody scared. So our Fiesta USA may be truncated down to a mariachi band in the farmer's market because we're not too sure whether we're going to have horses and a parade and all that with groups of people standing on the sidewalk like we had envisioned for September. So that's still in flux right now. But come up, come November, we have a fantastic event on Chrome Avenue, which is going to be our, our Corvette, the Sunshine Corvette Club car show, and that's going to be an, a, a killer event. So let's keep our fingers crossed everything's going well. And then December is our Fiesta USA. I just brought our, our calendar of events, so if you don't mind, I, may I pass this out to you? Thank you. And thank you for your time today. Just two comments real quick about the garbage. Um, Monday morning, it was just as bad as I've ever seen it. So. Not that we necessarily need an extra pickup, but it's usually the same thing I see. It's just very overflown with maybe 10, 20 cups sitting next to the garbage. So either a bigger decorative garbage can or two side by side. It's not that much more, but it just always looks untidy. And then a quick update on the um, inmate crews. I spoke to two different organizations who are looking at starting programs out in the prisons to help educate our residents in the prisons about vaccines and their health. So I will let you know how that goes. Thank you. All right. So and we, we voted on the use. Yeah. Okay. So now we're down to tab nine, car number 3297. Some order now. We we had a motion and a second. But I think you have to amend the motion to not have the power wash. Okay, motion amended back to no power washing. Okay, so we've got a, a re motion and a re second to approve without the power without. Is that for this time? The, for this no time. Power, and for okay. future discussion, we'll come up with the right policy and precedent. So. All right, very good. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And, and not that the plaza doesn't need a good cleaning throughout. And the manager will remember a conversation I had with her during the pandemic when I'm certain that the last time it was done was in the double digit thousands to have the entire plaza done at, at one time, but it needs it. So when we start renting it out, that can fund the regular pressure cleaning. All right, okay, tab nine. Staff seeks direction from mayor and council on the request by the South Florida Regional Planning Council for a letter of support for a grant application. The project goal is to assist in the regional integration of critical military resilience concerns into strategies, plans, and actions in surrounding municipalities to force to protect and enhance both the natural and man-made hazard resilient future that considers the unique South Florida military operations within a broad coastal region. According to the South Florida Regional Planning Council over the past 18 to 24, over the 18 to 24 month project, rather, the following objectives will be met. Produce a military installation resilience review and implementation action plan. Develop partnerships to enhance natural hazards and man-made risks, readiness and response capabilities today, while directly addressing future conditions to support longer term planning and mitigation. Create a unified resilience assessment standard for the regional military. Create decision support tools and data for resilience planning, identify capacity priorities and responsibilities for making resilience and decisions and investments. There's an attached draft letter of support that was provided by South Florida Regional Planning Council that's attached to your item and they should be on the line to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Are you there? 
Are there any questions? Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, can you hear me? All right. Is there anything you would like to add to the mayor's presentation? I know she asked you just to come in in case there were any questions from council, but uh, before we go there, is there anything you would like to add to the present to the manager's comments? Uh, well, I would just amplify this is a, uh, a, a federal grant from the, uh, the Department of Defense Office of Local Defense Community Cooperation. Uh, the, the matching funds have been provided by the state, and so there's no, no funds required. Um, as, as it said, it's a regional approach, so there are several installations, including Homestead Air Reserve Base. And, uh, you know, so far we've received uh, uh, letters of support from all the municipalities, for example, uh, Mayor Johnston in, in, uh, in the city of Key West for Naval Air Station Key West, Mayor Bermudez in Doral for the U.S. Army Garrison and uh, Southcom headquarters, and Fort Lauderdale for the South Florida Ocean Measurement Facility up in uh, Port Everglades area. So. Um, we would greatly appreciate the city of Homestead um, being in support. And I, and I would say the, the last thing to realize is the benefit of having this uh, study and assessment done is that it provides the foundation for any uh, gaps or shortfalls identified to apply for other follow-on implementation grant monies that actually can fund, uh, you know, implementation and fixes. And this is really focused on infrastructure and resilience support things that the community provides to the base so the focus really here is outside the base fence line but it's on issues and matters that are important to ensure the resilience of the military mission inside the fence line so it, it really is a i'll say a win-win for the for the for the installation but also for the local community because it's it's infrastructure and issues that benefit uh, both the military members and the local citizens and with that i'll take any questions you might have very good, thank you. And man, you're just looking for some uh, directive of approval for the city to issue the letter in support of the exactly. grant application. Yes, sir. Questions or comments? Thank you. Maybe Council I didn't over. hear clearly, but who is this letter of support going to be um, presented to once we give it to um, the Office of Local Defense Community well, Cooperation? Yeah, well, it, it you know the letter will go to the. Um, the old CC Office of Local Defense Community Cooperation. They are the the official uh, grantor of the of the federal money, so it, it's going to them. And South Florida Regional Planning Council is the grantee uh, to run the project here locally in South Florida. So this letter would be um, presented as part of a package of requesting a grant on behalf yes. of another entity. Per okay, and when's the deadline that for that grant? Um, the the application, um, or at least the core of the application, has been submitted. It's being finalized uh, over the next couple of weeks. It's due to be presented. We don't have an exact date yet, but by the end of August, it's due to be presented uh, for decision within uh, the Office of Local Defense Community Cooperation with an anticipated uh, award and start of the project in September of this year. I personally am very protective of the base, and I would like to know if we could, um, thank you for answering my questions, first of all. I apologize for, for not recognizing that. Uh, but I'd like to see if we can push this item to the regular council meeting to give me an opportunity as the liaison between the South Day Chamber of Commerce Military Affairs Committee as well as a regular attendee of the Military Affairs Council meetings to ask them if they're aware of this organization, if they, are, if they support it, um, and then come back with a, with an opinion, but I mean, on paper it looks good. I can, I can, I can quickly answer that. So the um, the, the the South Dade Chamber is aware and supportive of the project. Uh, Homestead Air Reserve Base itself is very supportive. The commander there has signed out a, a you know endorsement and support letter for the project. So yeah, um, so the answer to that is yes and yes. Well, that's great to hear. So it'll be easy for them to verify and our meeting. For council would be next Wednesday the following no it's um, not until the 18th it's the following it's a couple of weeks because we're early with the cow would there be any issue with us approving this on the 18th versus tonight tonight would be it correct well if approved tonight that's it I'm asking I'm asking the you're asking for a delay you're asking for us not to take action on this tonight 
I'm asking the uh, the individual on the phone whether or not it would it would be any issues with just approving it at the council meeting so that I can ask some additional questions. Well, I mean, certainly the, the sooner we can get it in, the better. But if if you want the extra time, that's you know your your prerogative to to do that follow up and then approve it next week if that's. I have a suggestion, Mayor. The council sent him. I don't, and uh, Matt can confirm, but I don't know that this a letter of support requires um, a council decision. I think if you have the direction that you can have the letter of support with the consensus that you need, Councilwoman, then I think it can be signed before the council meeting. I think if the council wants to direct the manager to execute the letter of support contingent upon receipt of the support of the base, and I, I'm sorry, the other organization, the, the MAC, um, then that, that would be fine for Kate. And then the, the, as soon as that, uh, that was realized, then Kate could go ahead and forward the letter of support. I'm fine with that. I'm just not familiar with either of these requests from, from past experience, and I'm fine with making a motion to approve it, contingent to uh, not hearing anything negative between now and council meeting. Well, okay, and I'll wait to hear from you, Councilwoman. I just, you said between now and council meeting. So if the goal was to get this out once confirmation was done, it's once you receive the confirmation and it's passed on to Kate, then Kate can forward the letter. It wouldn't come back to council. That would. That's fine. Okay. Okay. This is a letter supporting a grant to study the resiliency of the base based upon current situations, correct? Uh, and, and the potential, the, the, the negative impacts upon the base based upon current situations. Is that, is that a fair assessment? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. So, you know, this, this, this study would, if, if the grant is awarded, your study would tend to be supportive of the military installation of this community. Absolutely. That is the intent of this. And, and that's the way that uh, uh, the commander of the, of the base sees it as well. All right. And okay. So it's, it's your statement that the base commander is aware of and supportive of, of your application for this grant. The base commander has signed a letter of support, which is part of the application package. All right. Well, I, I don't know why we have to have such a big rigmarole. Well, I do. It's an odd year and it's that time of year. Um, I'm, I'm good with directing the manager to go ahead and execute the letter, but I'm just one of six tonight. So I'd ask the rest of you to weigh in. Mayor, the letters that he's referencing are not presented in our application, in our agenda. It's attached to the car item. It's exhibit one. This is the letter that they're recommending we sign. The letters he's referencing that the base has signed. Oh, I'm it's sorry. Yes, here, that's the letter they're recommending we sign. I apologize. I make the motion to approve the letter of support with my follow-up confirmation to management, to city manager, that I did not receive any um, adverse comments or negative responses in, related to this request. Do we have a second? I second it with a question. Do you, how, how long do you foresee it would take for you to obtain the information? Within the next seven days. I'm okay with, with moving forward with it, um, but I want to respect your, your, your comfort level and getting the information that you need. So contingent upon your um, conversations, you, you can go forward. Um, I'm okay with it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We have a motion and a second for approval of issuance with uh, conditions. All in favor? Any opposed? 
All right. I know. The manager and I have one more item that, quite frankly, we both forgot at the end of the last council meeting, and that is a public announcement and a disclosure to each one of you that two days in a row, in a given a week to be determined, I guess what I would say is two days in a row, once a month, my office will be utilized by a member or two of the staff of uh, our U.S. Representative uh, Jimenez for constituent outreach. It will be limited to um, business hours of City Hall and any further closures and mass mandates and safety issues we have. We just wanted the public and council to be aware that uh, just to accommodate the, the representative, uh, my office space will be utilized for more or less 16 hours a month uh, in, in a given week. Madam Manager? I'm glad we remembered. Me too. All right. Is there anything further? We have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.